As, as vice president, I am like a driver's mate. But by the grace of God, if you make me the president, I will be in the driver's seat with constitutional... I will be in the driver's seat with constitutionally mandated authority to pursue my vision and my priorities. So what do I want to do in terms of vision and priorities and policies if you give me the opportunity by the grace of God to become president of the Republic of Ghana? Ladies and gentlemen, in this regard, I have been, I have been engaged in a lot of consultation and doing a lot of thinking in the last few months about the lessons of the last seven years as well as my vision and priorities as I seek to become President of the Republic of Ghana. Clearly, the initial conditions that we inherited in 2017 are not the same as will be in 2025. Therefore, my priorities will be different. We have done many good things and I will be seeking to build upon them. My vision, ladies and gentlemen, is to create a tent big enough to accommodate all our people, to tap into the resourcefulness and talents of our people, irrespective of our different ethnic, political, and religious backgrounds, to channel our energies into building the kind of country that assures food, self-sufficient, safe, prosperous, and a dignified future for all Ghanaians. <laughs> to create sustainable jobs with meaningful pay for all and for Ghana to participate fully in the fourth industrial revolution using systems and data. To realize this vision, we must have a mindset of possibilities and not impossibilities. The challenges we must overcome as a country are too important to let our political differences derail us. There is a critical failure of mindset that manifests itself in the absence of core values, patriotism, and principles within our society. We, we need to invigorate the can-do spirit of the Ghanaian, to believe that we can do better than we have ever imagined if we put our minds to it. For example, our students from Mamfi Girls Senior High School and Prempe College have won international robotic competitions against their peers in the U US, Germany, and South Korea. We must apply the same mindset of beating the world in robotics, singathons, and cookathons to every sphere of economic activity. We must believe, we must believe that it is possible. This must be inculcated in our children from home and in school. This is why we are going to introduce a growth mindset curriculum in our schools to help students build critical skills such as problem solving, risk taking, opportunity spotting, and design thinking. Ladies and gentlemen, in the area of macroeconomic stability, a major goal of my government would be to sustain and sustain macroeconomic stability with low inflation, low interest rates, exchange rate stability, and low budget deficits. In terms of prudently managing our expenditures, to reduce the budget deficit and interest rates, my government will enhance fiscal discipline through an independent fiscal responsibility council enshrined in the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2018, Act 982. The Fiscal Responsibility Act will also be amended 
to add a fiscal rule that requires that budgeted expenditure in any year does not exceed 105% of the previous year's tax revenue. This will, be, this will prevent the experience of budgetary expenditures based on optimistic revenue forecasts, which many a time do not materialize. Ladies and gentlemen, furthermore, my government will reduce the fiscal burden on government by leveraging the private sector. Under the two-term administration of my boss, His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Kufuado's government, we have put in place many social safety nets, like free SHS, free TVET, and so on. With all these social safety nets in place, my government will now focus on jobs and wealth creation by the private sector for all Ghanaians. My administration. <laughs> My administration, thank you, will incentivize the private sector to complement government in the provision of many infrastructure and other services to reduce government expenditure and improve maintenance. The private sector will be encouraged to build roads, schools, hostels, and houses for government to rent or lease to hold. The demand for roads construction is massive, and this has historically placed a huge burden on the budget. I believe that the private sector should finance the construction and maintenance of roads through PPP concession arrangements. Also, the government will move towards leasing rather than purchasing vehicles, printing equipment, and so on the private sector will have the responsibility for maintaining the vehicles and the equipment. With this approach, government can save very significant outright cash out expenditure annually from, um, from various items across different ministries, departments, and agencies. This policy will energize the private sector and create many jobs. Enhancing the role of the private sector along with fiscal and administrative decentralization, improving our systems and the way our institutions function will lead to greater efficiency, cutting waste and ensuring value for money in procurement. The move towards private sector provision of many public services would create the fiscal space of at least 3% of GDP annually. This represents a major paradigm shift. Additionally, an efficient system of governance will require even fewer ministers. I would have, therefore, no more than 50 ministers and deputy ministers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about our tax system. To increase government tax revenue, we have to reform and refocus the Ghana Revenue Authority towards broadening the tax base. Unfortunately, the pressure that is placed on GRA staff to collect revenues makes them focus on existing taxpayers. Sometimes they even have to go and sit in people's shops to monitor sales a process known as invigilation. In fact, many businesses feel harassed by this process and the constant audits of their operations. So this has to stop. We must strike the right balance between collecting revenue and allowing businesses to thrive. Our job is to protect the productive forces. The World Bank has estimated that revenues amounting to 13% of GDP 
that is 24 billion US dollars in 2023 are not collected because people are outside the tax net. My administration will introduce a very simple citizen and business friendly flat tax regime. A flat tax of a percentage of income for individuals and SMEs, which constitute 98% of all businesses in Ghana, with appropriate exemption threshold to set for, to protect the poor. With a new flat tax regime, a tax return should be able to be completed in just a few minutes. We will also simplify our complicated corporate tax system and VAT regime. To start the new tax system on a clean slate, my government will provide a tax amnesty that is a complete exemption from payment of taxes for a specified period and waiving the interest and penalties up to a certain year to individuals and businesses for failures to file taxes in previous years so that everybody will start afresh. Digitalization will be implemented across all aspects of tax administration. Everyone will be required to file a very simple tax return electronically through their mobile phone or computer. There will be no manual or paper filing of taxes under my administration. Assessments by GRA will also be faceless. Faceless assessments will provide transparency and accountability. There will be no need to send GRA to officers to go and sit in shops. E-invoicing as being implemented by the GRA will be extended to all companies. Estonia, India and Mexico provide very useful models for Ghana in the area of tax digitalization. Ladies and gentlemen, in addition, any audits by GRA will also be done electronically and facelessly. Furthermore, no entity will be audited more than once in five years unless anomalies are detected which the individual or company does not correct after being given the opportunity to do so. We will amend the law so that if there is a dispute about tax assessment, a binding arbitration will take place through a body constituted by institutions such as the Ghana Arbitration Center, Institute of Taxation, AGI, Institute of Chartered Accountant, Private Enterprise Foundation, Ghana Employers Association, and so on, with a mandate to resolve any appeal in a maximum of three months. This will not affect companies, however, who by their agreements have such arbitrations taking place in international jurisdictions. Ladies and gentlemen, with cuts in government expenditure, the private sector undertaking expenditure that would normally be done by government, and the new tax regime, the flat tax regime, that will enhance compliance, broaden the tax base, and increase tax revenue. With these policies, the situation we are going to face in 2025 is going to be very different from the situation we faced in 2020 and 2022.